Hey guys, welcome to Waste Not Wednesday, live from not so sunny Utah. <laughs> we go live every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time and we take junk that other people would throw away or discard and we turn it into home decor that we sell at our shop, jamierayvintage.com or um, use in our own home. Today we have two broken thrift store items, um, $6 and under for each item. And these definitely were brought to the thrift store because they were broken. We didn't realize how broken the stool was until we got it. We'll go into showing you and talking about how we repaired it. And then we're gonna show you how we make it over. And then Zeb's got these lovely, tell me, what do you have Zeb? <laughs> these are giraffes and we sold quite a few giraffes and elephants. They're very popular, easy to segue into like a French country cottage, or, you know, if you've got a safari theme going on in your house, um, no, no judgment here. But, but the, uh, the ears are weird on these guys. They look like bat ears. I'm going to reshape them a little bit. Um, and then I think I was going to reshape this snout, but I think once we paint it and it doesn't have the creepy red eyes, that will be good to go. And this one was falling off. So I just helped it out because it'll be easier to paint and then we'll glue it back on. So this, um, we started yesterday repairing it. This was pretty much detached from every joint. It had some splits. They had tried to use some screws to repair it as opposed to wood glue and clamping. When you are repairing wood, proper clamps and wood glue will do so much more than a screw ever will and doweling. So all that transpired. Um, each, it was taken completely apart, glued together, clamped together. I think, how many clamps did you use? Like 10 or 12? A lot. A lot. <laughs> and then this morning we reassembled it after it had overnight to dry and cure up. Um, and then Zeb just glued on the bottom and screwed on that. We did test it. It does fine with me. When you get over 200 pounds, this little stool is not as sturdy. It's so like we'll, a kid's stool though. We'll make sure that whoever gets it knows like what the limits are, but it's as sturdy as it was when it was purchased initially. And it was, it's been repaired the right way. I think I probably should have paid more attention because I feel like $6 for a stool that needs to be completely disassembled, glued and reassembled is a little excessive, that but was a lot. sometimes it happens. Sometimes you buy stuff at the thrift store and you get home and you're like, what the heck? All right, so I'm gonna get started. We are gonna be using an Iron Orchid Designs transfer on this. This is, I actually don't know. Let me find the transfer so I can give you the name of it. So I'm just trimming these ears to shape them to be more like a giraffe ear. And I think some of the bat feeling or bat wing feeling is the way that these are painted on here. But I'm just gonna give them more of a giraffe shape. I'm just using a razor knife. I also have my uh, my bowl carver out just in case I needed it. Actually, that might be easier. I'm using the Cosette transfer. We've actually already used the top portion on a different project. So I'm finding ways to use each and every piece of the Cosette transfer. And I already laid it out to see how it would fit with this hole in the middle. And I wound up cutting out one word that I knew would be weird because most of it would be missing. And so this is gonna go on here like this, but we gotta paint it first. So to get started, I'm using DIY's uh, vintage linen as a base coat because I can heat gun it because the I want to use vintage pink, but if I use vintage pink on live TV and then I try to heat gun it, sometimes it will bubble. So in the interest of time, base coating it with vintage linen, I'll heat gun that and then I'll finish it up with vintage pink because I just think that transfer on vintage pink is going to be really cute. So let me get this open. We've had, we just did, was it last week we did the dresser in vintage pink? Yeah. People have been loving it because it's not like a overly feminine rosy pink. It's got a little bit of peach undertones, which is the color of the year this year is like peach Who rose knew? or something. Who knew it was going to be really just, similar to the color of I the year. I just designed it be, with peach in it because um, that's every vintage pink piece that I've ever found had kind of a peachy undertone, like when you find true vintage painted pieces. So hopefully every giraffe makeover in your future, because you can find them at the thrift store. They're actually pretty common. I could probably pick up one or two a week um, between all the thrifting we do. I think it comes from your deep love of going to the zoo as a kid. You're like, I can't pass up that elephant. I can't pass up that giraffe. <laughs> 
And yeah. you're not the only person that likes them because they always sell really well for us. So if you guys are resellers, like do not pass up the zoo wild Sometimes animals. they're like weird, funky colors or like these have like a very artistic style on the ear and the, the snout up here. Maybe they're like a breed of giraffe that we just don't know. No, I don't think so. I think there's like <laughs> one type. Maybe a big They look like there was too. like, you know, I'm when not they... up on my my zoology right now. You know when you watch those shows, Zeb, where they like mix things that shouldn't be mixed, like mad scientists? That's mm -hmm. what those giraffes look like to me. Yeah. Like they mixed a bat and a giraffe, and this is what transpired. The other thing about using the vintage pink is that the transfer will adhere much better to a top coat, and vintage pink has a built in top coat. So that'll work for us. All right. So let's do a close up. This ear hasn't been touched. You can see I drew a little line on it. This one, I carved it back a little bit. And I think once I repaint it, I think this is throwing my eye off and making it look weird. I think this is closer to an actual shape. I mean, realistically, giraffe's ears don't hang back behind their head like this. They would be more like a horse's, like upright. And I think they can like cone around like a horse's ear can. But, or like a hippo. Yeah. Lots of animals can, dogs too, so that they can hear better, but we're going to go with it. Ivy was saying that in one of her thrifting groups that she's in, they talk about having a house hippo, like finding a hippo thrifting and having it in your house. Nice. It's just fun. I think every house should have something in it that's unexpected that is fun because sometimes we take life too seriously and thrifting is the perfect opportunity to find something it's whimsical that you can incorporate into your house. And by painting it, you don't have to make it look like completely out of place. You can incorporate it into your style, but yeah, it's interesting. Gives people something to talk about. If you have kids, they're always a fan of the animals, you know? Well, and I'm going to paint these neutral, right? Like they're going to be, they're going to look really good in pretty much any setting that you're going to put them in. I'm going to off camera flip this upside down and completely paint the underside lid. But in the interest of time, I'm not doing it while I'm live. So once it's completely dry, I will paint the inside of this and make sure it's fully covered. So no matter where you look at it, it doesn't look weird. Deb says, I agree. I love whimsy. And Vicky says, why not a hippo? Exactly. Like life is too short to take yourself so seriously. One of the things I want to do is I saw a um, lamp that was a bunny and obviously it was like mass produced but they like took basically a bunny figurine and it was a lamp so i'm on the hunt for a large plaster she or yelled resin. down the stairs at me zab i thought something was wrong i was and so then she excited. shows me this picture she's like do you think you could drill bunnies if i find the right one i'm like yeah, what's wrong? Are you okay? She's like, I'm fine. I'm just really excited. I just, you know, sometimes I get very excited. And I follow, um, I don't know if you guys follow Liz Marie. She's on Instagram. I actually saw that she's trying to do it. So I'm curious to see how hers goes. I think hers is not a bunny. Um, but I'm curious to see how her project goes and get some insight from that before I attempt it on my own. But how fun would that be to have like a big bunny, drill a hole through it, put a base on it and put a lamp kit. So coming to a Waste Not Wednesday near you. <laughs> That's how I get all my best ideas, though. Like, they just kind of, I'm always on Pinterest. I'm always on Instagram or reading magazines. And I see things, and then my brain just, like, automatically tries to figure out how I can create it, like, in a DIY. People ask us, like, how do you guys know? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It just happens. You know, there's some people that are just good at some things, and naturally good at others i'm my brain likes to figure stuff out the cool thing about these giraffes is they're like wood and then they were probably pieced together and they've got a plaster over them to make them like cohesive so they were multiple pieces i think so i think the legs might be separate not like solid carb yeah So not super exciting, but the, we're already taking a little bit of shape here just by painting this white. And I could just do white on it and put the transfer, but I think the vintage pink is just going to make, it's going to push this over the edge. And I hope whoever bought it, because it's already sold, um, likes pink because it's going to be cute. 
We can also show you um, a sneak peek of tomorrow's video. We've been doing thrift flips, trying to go into detail of how we turn trash into cash. And that's going to be on the end of our Goodwill bins video tomorrow. Let me tell you, the trash to treasure was pretty real. We had a lot of stuff in the garage that like in the initial... Sometimes if we don't find a lot of stuff, we'll start really reaching and be like, okay, I can turn this into that. I can change this into something else. I, that needs a ton of repair, but we can do it. And we end up with these projects in the garage that we didn't get around to doing. They didn't sell because we didn't fix them yet and show what the end result looks like. And that was yesterday. We had probably, what, are, like 15, 20 items oh, over we, there? At least 20 items yesterday were finished. Um, some of them are sold. So if you guys have ordered an uh, item in the last couple of weeks, it says will be painted. They should be shipping out in the next few days. Last week, we actually didn't get any painted just the way our schedule worked out. And so yesterday was really like our makeup day where we just got, we just like pulled everything that had sold plus some extras so we could really get a hold of it. And we're down, I would say we went through about 25% of our stash. So our goal is to just keep pot, like working at it. And I was thinking I could even grab like, even on a non-painting day, I could grab something after the kids go to school, put a coat of paint on it and just leave it on the island and just come back and work on it throughout the day. And by the end of the day, I could have one or two things complete. And that's what we're going to do till we make it through. And we're going to be <laughs> more selective with what we buy because we can fix stuff <laughs> doesn't mean we should sometimes we need to be like realistic about our time because we have a lot of projects coming up yeah spring spring is right around the corner we're already feeling it a little bit we had a bunch of snowstorms but it's going to be in the 40s and almost 50 next week like we're end of january it's it's a lot like uh you know end of november where it could snow at any time but it's starting to it's about same temps you can have a random warm day and everything melts off. Looks like um, Ivy already answered the question, Elizabeth, but yes, um, vintage pink is a cottage color. So it's one of our colors that is manufactured by DIY paint, but it's a Jamie Ray vintage line. We get to pick all the colors, which is really exciting because I know what I love to use as a creator and a reseller. And that directly reflects in every single color that we pick. I'm always thinking, how is this going to be useful to the end consumer, especially people that are in the same industry as us or designers? Because I know what I'm always looking for. Yeah, if you have a retailer that sells DIY paint, not all of them carry the cottage color. So definitely check ahead of time, maybe reach out on Facebook, make sure that they do have it in stock. If they don't and they aren't going to get in stock, we can ship to you. But sometimes all it takes is just asking, hey, like, I'm interested in this color, and then maybe they'll order it for you. I could have also used the primer, but the primer is a little bit different and does have some different properties and doesn't heat gun as well. So that's why I decided to use the vintage linen just to lay down that first coat, get good coverage, and be able to heat gun it on camera. Esther says she can't stop looking at our floors. Um, did we do a video? So, Deb, you want to tell them about the video on the floors and where they can find it? Yes, we we have a full video on installing the floors. We painted them a couple times. The original 1917 floors were in the house when we moved in, uh, and we just they were so bad and feathered in. We had to paint them, and it was getting to the point where like there wasn't a subfloor underneath. There's a basement underneath the house here. This part of the house. And so they were moving a lot and cracking and chipping and they were never going to stop doing that because there wasn't a subfloor. And so we're like, you know what, let's just make it match and put oak in here. And we did that on the Jamie and Zeb uh, channel. Um, so that's, that's where we do like the in-between projects that don't necessarily fit with like home decor or thrift flipping or thrifting or painted furniture. And we put those projects over on that channel. And in the summertime, we do a lot of vlog style like gardening cooking, canning, um, all kinds of fun stuff. Rex. Sorry, our dogs are barking. Rex. Somebody parked out front. Oh, there's... So on Facebook, you can look going. up Jamie and Zeb and find that page, or you can go to YouTube and look oh, up yeah. Jamie and Zeb. Both places, we post the content there. You can also find things like our table build that we just did. Um, it's a lot more behind the scenes construction and stuff. We just found that not all of our Jamie Ray Vintage viewers were that interested in like the nitty gritty 
And so anytime we do like major construction or builds, we just put it on that channel. I got to put these guys up. There's oh. construction out here and these guys are going to be barking at everyone that walks okay. by. We may take um, like the, Let's go the finish work for the dining table and edit that down and condense it and put that up on Jamie Ray Vintage on Facebook because those shorter videos do well, like under three minutes on Facebook. Um, but we haven't had time to re- do it. Sorry, I have a smoking gun because I sat it down. I got most of it off, but I sat it down on my lid to my sealer yesterday. And so there's plastic melting off. It's, <laughs> I was in here praying. Well, I was in here painting and Zeb said it was time to pray. And so all the kids came in so we could pray before we went to bed. And I just set down my heat gun and we said prayer. We're like halfway through prayer and I, and I peek open my eye and I had to like put, pick up the gun and then afterwards I wiped it off. Yeah, it's better to pick that up and burn the house. Oh out. yeah. I will definitely interrupt my eye closing for prayer to keep everybody safe. So be careful where you sit your heat gun. I'm usually pretty good. I just didn't see that little lid there. So I have weathered wood out in case I need that. Um, but I think I'm just going to do my traditional, I've done this on drafts before. This is DIY in Sandy Bond. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do you need, I got a drink of water if you need it. No, I'm good. Okay. Thanks though. Um, Sandy Blonde and it's a great neutral and then I like to dark wax it. Almost dry. I'm going to go ahead and just get the top of this since it's dry painted with the cottage color and then work on the rest because this is where the transfer is going to go and you do want your paint to be all the way dry before you apply the transfer this is actually going to really work out rashonda likes these. the color of your giraffe Seb. thank you i think i feel like it still fits with the safari theme while not being like so in your face giraffe pattern it neutralizes it yeah we have another thing that we like to do is we'd like to paint like bunnies copper so that's going to be on the next video we had a lot of copper and dark wax and it actually turned some of our thrift flips like into beauty like they look good i'm excited i'm excited for you guys to see tomorrow's video we're trying to like we're switching up our schedule the thrifting is really popular but our ogs the people that are probably here watching us now love the thrift flips the painted furniture etc so we're kind of replacing furniture friday like the video that goes up thursday night um, with a bins video, but then at the end of the video, we're showing how we make over the item. So it'll either include thrift flips or it'll include furniture being painted. It really just depends on what we've sold recently in the shop. Like two weeks ago, we did furniture. That's because we needed to replace some pieces, but until we sell more furniture, we probably won't do anymore because I don't paint furniture just to paint it. it. has to have somewhere to go. Yeah, then it just ends up in the barn or the garage getting dusty and dinged up because I have to move it around and we have to repaint it anyway, so it's like pointless. Our channel has always been and always will be whatever we're doing for our Jamie Ray Vintage business. And so that's why like, we're doing more thrifting, so you're getting more thrifting. All right, I'm going to go rinse this off. Um, see if there's any questions. It's Sherry's birthday. Happy birthday, Happy Sherry. Happy birthday, Sherry. Crazy Mama said, there's her stool. I hope you like pink because that's where it's going next. I always like to think like if this was mine, how would I want it done? And I'm like, pink is going to be so cute on the stool. Well, we did a stool yesterday. I will show you guys that. We'll give you a little sneak peek. I'll, I'll, that, that one we can sneak peek. That one's it lesbians. also has a potential new large format decoupage paper on there. And it was a learning curve because it's a new kind of rice paper that we're trying out. <clears throat> we haven't used this kind before. And even though it says rice paper on it, every manufacturer is different. Everything's like, it's a little heavier um, GSM than, than our, which just means like thicker paper, uh, than our A4 rice paper is. And so it decoupaged a little differently. I think there might be a slight learning curve, but it laid down so smooth and flat, like we'll, we'll probably stay with it. I think it'll work. Um, cause we've been looking, that's been our biggest thing is finding something in the large format that'll work with decoupage and it's a high enough quality that it really holds the image well. And we're getting a really crisp, bright image that we couldn't achieve with the tissue paper sizes. Well, and whenever we come out with a new product we always like to test it out, even if it means like a delay in release, like we Zeb really wanted to get these papers out in January, but we really feel like we need to print it, try it out. 
which is fun because you guys get to see the process that is behind the scenes of developing products. We And I will say we had a few people very upset that we wouldn't share our printer. Well, we do share the process. We do not share propriety, proprietary information. We want you guys know, to know how to use the products that we create, but it would be akin to going to a paint manufacturer that creates content and saying, I want to see how you make your paint. What machines do you use? What ingredients do you use? Where are you getting it from? <laughs> no paint manufacturer is going to give out that information. It's not, especially if they have retailers, like we owe it to our retailers not to create direct competition for the products that we're creating. So we will show you how to use it, share with you the trial and error process, but we're not going to give out the information. Somebody's like, I'm going to unfollow you. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Like, I feel like sometimes people just need to understand we're not trying to be like secretive. We really do share a lot of information, but there's just some things that are not in our business interest to share. And that, I still got to feed my kids. Yeah, we still got to feed our kids. <laughs> we got to pay for our employees. If I give away all the secrets. And it wouldn't be fair to What would you retailers. need me for? Yeah. So there you go. Robin says her ginger jar should be there soon. That's exciting. I know they were shipping a lot of stuff. We have had a little bit of a delay with getting out the craft kits, but they should be getting out on time. Um, we're starting to ship those out. We just had a manufacturer issue and they were difficult. We ordered them in plenty of time, luckily, because we had to kind of scramble and make some changes, but we're well, excited. We got shipping labels that in like end of December saying that they were coming and then they came all broken. They came all broken and they didn't all come. And, and then, then they, they didn't replace the broken ones. So some and... people we've contacted and we're doing something a little bit different, um, but we are making sure everybody's taken care of. We will hopefully do the video next week. Lesson learned. This is why we usually do all of the craft kit production in-house. <laughs> yeah, we will do a video next week showing how to do it. We have turned off signing up for craft kits just because we don't have access to any more supplies for this particular kit. But if we do wind up having extra because we're being conservative, then we will sell the craft kits after the fact to other people. But right now we're just making sure we take care of the people that have already signed up. It's part of business. Stella says you share more than most would ever share. I'm thankful for what you share. Thank you. I appreciate that. And Veronica says some things are just meant to be private. The more we do social media, the more we realize they're like, there's things that happen in our lives that we don't share because it's not always ours to tell too. Like people need to keep that in mind, especially where like kids are concerned or personal, like family matters. Like sometimes you just keep that to yourself. And I'm okay when other people don't share things just because I want to know doesn't mean I need to know. There's a lot that's not needed. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, when it comes down to it, need yeah. to know is very, very, uh, very uh, exact. <laughs> the more you know, the more you don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like you realize like, oh, I, I didn't know about that. I didn't know about that. I didn't know that was going on. A says it's none of our business. It is hard though, because I do, we do love sharing with you guys. There's been a few things recently that we've been working on as a family and just things going on that we haven't been able to share. And I'm not going to lie. It's hard because I feel like we're so close to you guys and I want to share things. And they're just some things that just Zeb and I keep to ourselves. All right. I'm pulling paint. I got to dry this off before I smear it all over the place. Okay. And I am, Rosie says that is the beauty of learning. Yep. Never take, miss an opportunity to learn and grow. All right. I'm going to probably have to do two coats of this vintage pink, so I might heat gun it a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about heat gunning the bottom because the bottom I can always finish off camera. You guys get the, you guys get the idea. It's negative four in Alaska. Whoa. That's cold. And we are we are not complaining. We're enjoying the 40 degree weather. So we're actually pretty as far as like Utah mountains go, our our winters are fairly mild comparatively. Like if you're up in the mountains like Heber Park City area, yeah. they're gonna be under piles of snow for a long time. Down here in the valley, we'll get like six to eight inches of snow and it'll usually melt off in the next week because we're only 4,600 feet in elevation and it does warm up during the day sometimes. Well, we're going to be 49 degrees next week and I'm 
Like I'm literally so excited. Which is why I think the bulk of the population in Utah lives in this valley. Yeah. <laughs> there's like there's like 3.3 million people in Utah and I think 2.8 million live between Payson and Ogden, <laughs> which is about an hour and a half strip of highway. Sherry says she loves the stool. Have you guys checked on Deb? We had one heck of a storm on Monday. Yeah, I talked to Debbie yesterday. We are working on some, some new stuff coming out with Debbie. So yeah, we talked Let's to just her. say first quarter, we like, like January has been pretty calm, but come February, there's a lot of releases. <laughs> Make sure you um, sign up for our emails and our tech service. Download the Jamie Ray Vintage app. So that way you're the first to know. Like we have releases, a lot of our manufacturers that we sell for have releases. It's going to be a good spring. We're Sherry, excited. Sherry said she asked a, paint, a company if their paint was clay based and they sent her back a nasty gram and she said, all right, bye. Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with asking what's like, if something is clay based. It's not like you're asking for exact measurements of all the ingredients. That's another story. Because you, you should know what's in the product you're using, right? Because you want to keep your home healthy, your well, products healthy. Well, sometimes people have allergies, like. The ingredients to DIY paint are actually all listed on the side. Not exact measurements and specific details, but the ingredients are listed, which is uh, not super common in paint. Not required, but it's there because they got nothing to hide. All right. I'm going to lightly heat gun this. It definitely needs a couple of coats. So this color is really light, so it does require more coats. Keep that in mind. The lighter the color, the less the coverage. It's not that there's anything wrong with the paint. It's that there's less pigments. And to get coverage, you need pigment. These guys are going to have a little bit of texture. That plaster has cracked in a couple places and it didn't really show up until I painted it, but I think it's going to add to them, make them look old. Are we going to the winter market in Vegas? You know, we haven't really done the markets because I can do most of my shopping. Since, from, you know, like we've been to a few and we've really learned what we like. And so I don't really have to go to the market to see what they have. Well, and since COVID, like all of these big companies have moved to like you can get it online just as easily as you can find it in a market. These days. Well, and we do not carry as much wholesale because we do so much secondhand upcycling DIY. Like we don't have the need for as much mass produced. Obviously, not everything in our store is found or vintage but a large portion of it is. So it's just not the best use of our time. We have we're pretty busy with our kids and our business. So getting out of town is is only done when it's just super advantageous for us. And we've just really found the resellers that we like. And I do a lot of research online. I do think it is helpful sometimes with clothes to go to Vegas so you can see stuff in person, but I don't sell as many clothes. And I've really honed in on the brands that I know and trust. And I've just been sticking with those. Well, clothes are are hard because the fit is different per manufacturer and sizing. Blonde? Yes. Okay, sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, I just asked. You're good. You're the one over there monitoring comments. Interrupt all you want. Have we ever regretted selling an item? No. I'm trying to think. I think it's, <clears throat> it's, I am a little froggy this morning. My throat, I thought I had it cleared out. I think it's hard to like, because we see so many things that we love. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to have to take you up on your water. <laughs> right here. I think to be successful resellers, you have to not get personally attached to things or yes. else you become a hoarder. And so because of that, and also because we see so much, we realize that just because we find something, at least for us, because of what we do for a living, doesn't mean we're never going to find anything similar or better because we do what we do. Like in the end user position, like somebody who's buying from us, Absolutely. You see something you want, you buy it. If you love it, you never let it go because you're not processing as much stuff. But because we are constantly shopping, reselling, buying, there are very few things that are, that I can't find something that I like as much. And I'm also just not um, emotionally attached to things. My family can tell you 
I'm pretty good about de-junking, decluttering, keeping things moving. Only things that are from my family are super important to me, like family heirlooms. And even then, if it's an heirloom that I cannot display or use, I'm not going to keep it because there's no, nobody benefits from something being stored in a box. So if it's not being used and adored, it's not being stored. The only thing I store is food Look at and you, camping Ryman. supplies. Can you fix the camera? Yeah. <clears throat> and like clothing that the kids are gonna grow into. But I really don't personally keep a bunch of home decor at my house. And I think a lot of it's too, because what we do for a living, I'm able to like, at the end of a season, when I put away my Christmas, anything that I'm like, you know what? I might want something else next year. I just take it straight to the shop. Then I don't have to keep a bunch of stuff. So hopefully that answers your question. Well, so when we were very first, like starting doing this together, the garage got very full because marketplace was like a new thing. Uh, Facebook selling groups were, were really big. And so we would, uh, Jamie would see something and we wouldn't pass it up if it was a good deal. And we got to the point where like, we couldn't even work in the garage. We we're out spraying stuff in the front driveway uh, all summer long because that was the only place we had. So you have to kind of be careful. You're like, do I have good stuff already that I haven't touched and, and fixed or finished or done something with so that I can move it along? And if the answer is yes, you do have that good stuff, then go ahead and pass on that until you have room again. Yeah, there are times that people will offer me things for free that I've absolutely would take it at a different time. But if I don't have time to deal with it or I've done a lot of it recently, I know that I like variety. And if it's something that like I get bored by it pretty easy, then I just pass it. Even if it's something that I have, sometimes people will be like, well, I've seen you buy this or use this before. Why don't you want it? And it's because we like to keep things fresh and interesting as it is. We kind of tend to buy. I mean, buy, we got staples like rolling pins. And yeah, we tend to buy things over <laughs> and over again, but sometimes I, I just don't want to do it. Like, that's just the way life is. I want to be, and maybe in six months I'll be like, oh yeah, I do want that. But you can't store everything forever. That's why I paint giraffes. They're always fun and new. This is a paint sweatshirt. So I have two of these. This is the one that has paint on it. And then I have my non-paint one. I love this sweatshirt so much that I have it both ways. <laughs> and I don't know how long this manufacturer is going to make them. Jamie lives in sweatshirts from about end of October to March. Sweatshirts and leggings are my winter uniform. And then in the summer, I like oversized t-shirts and biker shorts. If you can't nap in it, I'm unlikely to wear it. That's a good rule. <laughs> Deborah says, I have told her so many times. Deborah knows. Because my sister's really good about giving us stuff. And sometimes I'll be like, nope, I'm not interested in that at that time. It just It is what it is. You do have to get good at saying no. Because if you say yes, once people find out what you do, in, they want to help you. But then they want to help you a lot. And then by helping you, they you get a lot more than you can handle. Well, And also, there is a lot of joy that we get just from the hunt. Like finding the stuff. Oh, yeah. I love if we're always having people give us stuff, then we don't have room or time to go go do what we love. <laughs> well, and we, nobody, like videos where people just, well, I just say somebody gave me this are not, like nobody wants to watch that. Like people want to see what you do with what you can find, right? That's why we're painting the giraffe. I specifically waited to paint the giraffe because someone said on a video, I would have left that giraffe. That thing's super ugly. There's no way you can save that. I'm here to prove them wrong today. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Let me give this a minute, Matt. In it. Jana says, you need to pray for me to get rid of stuff I don't display. It's hard, and I think it's a learned behavior. The more you do it and the more you're able to just enjoy the things that you have. And I'm not a minimalist by any means. Like I have decor that serves no purpose other than it makes me happy. But when you are able to use a space and enjoy the things to the full capacity, it's kind of addictive. And then you're willing to do more. Like you can't just rip it off like a band aid for most people. That's pretty traumatic. Well, I feel like we have quite a few things in here. And someone was like, we showed the table and someone's like, look at that sterile room. There's nothing in there. She didn't say sterile. She just said, wow, there's nothing in there. My house must look like a mess. And then she shared her house and it was gorgeous. There was a lot of stuff, 
but it was art artist artfully displayed artfully artfully displayed and i loved everything in her space she showed me lots of pictures even shared a video and i was obsessed i personally am not like it takes me forever to make a decision. I haven't even hung anything on any of the walls upstairs. I have nothing going up the stairs. There's a couple frames, old <laughs> antique frames that are, I'm just going to print some art and put it in there. Yeah, I have frames that are on the wall that are empty. They're just empty frames. Because I haven't decided what I want to put on it. I have exactly two things, three things actually attached to the wall in this room, in this big room. I have a mirror, an oil painting, and a print that Debbie gave me. That's it because I can't commit. I am planning on 2024 moving into the family room. We've ordered a new couch that should work with our family better. And I'm hoping to get Zeb Correction, to do some more stuff should work with the dogs better. Should work with the dogs. They're family, true. right? They're worth it. Okay. I know we lost the spots on the giraffe, but once I dark wax this, I feel like the, the bat ears are mostly gone. It's really looking like a giraffe now. All right, my paint got a little thick here, and so I'm trying to make sure it's dry because if you try to put a transfer and it's like still cool to the touch and not dry, it's not good. So we're gonna let this cool down. We're gonna step away. I'll, I'll work on here, the bottom a little why bit. Why don't we, well, we're waiting on paint to cool down and dry off. I'll show you. Yeah, let's show them what. We'll that, give you a little sneak peek. You're gonna show them everything? I'm just gonna pan it real fast. Okay, it, it's it's from good, far away. It's a good pile of it. All right, there. so there's the pile we've been working on. Haha, <laughs> that's all you get. Show them Leslie's stool. But I will show you. I actually did show the stool in the Jamie Ray Vintage group yesterday, and I tagged her. I'm like, hope you like it. Yeah, if you guys are in Facebook. Because I used a new paper on it. <laughs> if you guys are in Facebook, make sure to answer the questions, but join the free Jamie Ray Vintage group. That's a really fun group to be in, not just to see what we do, but to see what other people do. Okay, this is cool. I'm going to give it another minute. All right, so this is the new rice paper we're Did experimenting we wax the base with. Yet? Yeah, I no. waxed it. It's okay. still not dry yet. It's just cool in here. I have the kitchen set to go to 63 degrees at night so the heater's not running when no one's in here. All right, so this is one. Of, so we actually did this print. If you guys remember that frame I did that was really long, this, this is that same print, but it like was messed up when it came out. And so I did rice paper on this and this is just like a small section of it on this stool, but I'm loving the colors, loving the Christmas. We got it to lay down really flat. If I angle it like that, you can see the whole scene there. You said Christmas, crispness, and I thought you said Christmas. I'm like, there's oh, no Christmas, there's no on, Christmas that. on this, but you can, you can see the whole scene right there. And I just, the colors are great. I'm super excited about it. I can't wait to get it to you guys. Um, we still have a few more experimentations to do. This was not the easiest to decoupage. I had, there was a learning curve and it looks like I need to get this corner down. Um, but we are still experimenting and we'll have full tutorials if we go this route. Um, where is the Jamie Ray Vintage Group? It is on Facebook. I, YouTube doesn't do groups, so I need to center. I guess I need to find the center of this, and then I'll know where to put this. Um, but yeah, it's on Facebook. Do we have a measuring tape, Zeb? Can you yes, grab me one? right here. I'm... Maybe I'll have you do it. Can you do I this for me? I forgot clear wax. Yeah, you want to clear wax my giraffes? Yes, I will trade you. You're better at lining things up. I'm okay, but not on live TV. Um, uh, this is already sold, so there's a little bit of pressure. Here we go. So pro tips with inlet or uh, transfers. If your paint is sealed it and it's like cured, it's the best. Like it's still going to be a little bit difficult. If I was not in a time crunch, I would wait at least two hours. Um, if you do use DIY paint and it doesn't have a sealer, just let it dry overnight. Make sure it's not powdery. If you've distressed it, you have to remove everything and then put the transfer on. And then after you put the transfer on, you can seal it over the top with clear wax or a water-based non-toxic gentle top coat. And I say gentle because every product we sell will be fine on top of this, but not every product in the market that's water-based will be fine on a transfer. So if they have 
chemicals in them, they have off-gassing that can cause these transfers to have adherence problems. And I only use, we only use the products that we sell. So I can't tell you what other brands work. So you might have to ask those people about them. So I always recommend it needs to be gentle. All right. So that just needs heat gun. If you can avoid putting wax on the feet and these spots here where okay. the nails are, I'm going to glue those. All right. I'm going to wax this first, then heat gun. Oh, goodness. What's, still What's wet? happening over here? <laughs> what? You cut a big hole in it. I just cut out a word because uh, the word would have been like two letters here and two letters there. So gotcha. don't worry about the hole. I think I'm actually just going to. I just need this. to find the center and put that in the center. That's oh, what I need. Oh, gotcha. That it. Yeah. I see what you're doing you, here. You pick it up what I'm throwing down there. All right, where's the clear wax? So there it is. 12 inches. Well, that's easy. Borrow this pencil. We're going to put one little mark on it. So chances are, if you see us use clear wax, we're using DIY's clear wax. This is one of the ones we use the most. We also carry in sweet pickings. That works too. I just feel like DIY wax um, doesn't have as much of an open time, so it sets up faster. But they both work. All right, this is for all the marbles. Well, if you screw it up, I'm gonna, it was him. It was me. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm seeing little drippy doos. Off camera, I will make sure that base is fully covered, but it'll be easier because the top will be dry and I can flip it. Do you have a transfer stick? Yeah, I just grabbed one, it's over there oh, somewhere. there it is. People probably heard me digging in the drawer while you were talking a second ago. Oh, that's all right. The mic hides a lot of the sounds, a lot of the stuff we've got going on. People always ask, like, how come we don't have our stuff ready to go? Because we don't always know what we're going to well, do. Well, the project changes as we're working on it here. I'm like, oh, you know, I want to do that. It's a creative process. Some people are like super organized with their creative process. I like to just do things as I think of them. And then sometimes I get really excited. Like, what about the bunny lamp that I want to make? I haven't even found the bunny. And I'm like, stoked. I think it's going to be a little bit difficult to find the right size of bunny. I don't think it's, we're going to find it right away. Are you going to dark wax these at all? Or are we just clear Yeah, waxing? that's why I'm, I didn't want them to be so muddy that, so that's why we're clear waxing okay. first. They do look better. You definitely did. Although these ears are still large. Yeah, but that giraffe is larger too, so I went with it. <laughs> You know what? Sometimes there's people with big ears too. I feel like mine are going to be really big by the time we're all done. If genetics stay consistent, you are correct. Because ears and noses keep growing. My mom told me that when I was a little girl. I'm like, Mom, why is Grandpa's ear so big? And I never forgot that. All right, this giraffe is waxed. If you want, you can just keep on going with the dark wax. Dark wax gets all over my fingers. I do use it. Laura, I don't know if my sister works at UAB. Um, Plus, we don't really share private information. Yeah, on I don't. Siblings. I actually don't know the name of the university that she's working at. I probably should know, but and she has told me that I can't remember it offhand. But that's fun that you retired. Twenty-eight years is a long time working in the same spot i haven't even been in the workforce 28 years yet have you not no how when did you start getting working close i started a discount hire when i was 17. i mean i've been working like pretty much so you 25 years so you're getting yeah close i guess <laughs> and we're getting there <laughs> closer than i'm, old, I'm always older than i think these days They say age is just a number, but I was texting Caitlin last night. It was like 11 or something, and she was up finishing something because she, Caitlin, um, works from home. And so she, sometimes she gets her work done at like, if she has something to do the next day, like last night, she stayed up late working because today she's got appointments and whatnot. So anyway, so she was working late, getting stuff done. So she had time this morning, and we had been up late. And I was talking to her about, we just got finished painting. She's like, we'll get some rest. I'm like, yeah, we got to go to sleep because we're not 29 anymore. <laughs> like we used to remember we used to stay up till two, three in the morning. Yeah, we and we'd working work. on projects and getting Especially ready for like markets. If there was a market. 
Jamie, don't do that no more. Like last night, we started dropping stuff. So, Stacy, the request to the Jamie Ray Vintage Group. Um, if you answered the questions, it'll auto join you. If you did not, it'll kick you out and you can just request again if you want. Um, it, we do that to keep like spammers and bots out. Yeah, we're not the ones like adding people. All you have to do is just answer the questions and it will automatically yeah. add you. So if somebody like invites you to join but you don't answer the questions, it won't let you in. So if you didn't get in pretty quick, because I think it does it pretty fast, try again, or I guess you could message Caitlin. At or we could look into info it on our end. JamieRayVintage.com is the best. But if it's already auto-declined, you'd have to send another like request. Yeah. We do that to protect the people that are in the group from like spammers. Spammers still somehow magically I mean, every get Every now and then they get in there, but and it's hard because I can't just sit there 24 hours a day and monitor it. No. So we have the automated thing doing it. So every now and then someone gets in and we have to kick them out. So if you ever see something that doesn't look right, just click where it says report to admins and it'll send it to me and Caitlin and Zeb and one of us will review it in that group because we want to make sure everybody's safe. I'm trying to roll this over the edge to get more transfer on here and it's proving a little difficult. But always like a little shout out for internet safety. Always be careful what you're putting on the internet. Sometimes we actually have deleted posts in the past because people will post private information that we're like, oh, we want them to be safe. We actually had somebody put their credit card, the entire information in comments because they wanted to buy something. Uh, I was like, oh no. And we had to delete that and try to get a hold of the customer and just be like, we can take your information, but we can't leave that up on online. Um, I don't know about not getting wax on this just, part. Just do your I'm best. trying not to, but I have to get kind of around it. Well, I'll use I'll use super glue and I'll heat gun it too. We can we'll get it done. Okay. It also has mechanical fasteners. Those nails on there will help hold it on pretty well. And I'm still waxing a giraffe. You're like, people, what'd you do at work today? Oh, I waxed a giraffe. See, I knew I could get you to work on that giraffe. You're like, you're painting this and doing it. Here well, we he, are. What Here he, we are. It's because I needed your assistance. <laughs> when he bought that, I'm like, I am not working on that thing. Because sometimes, and I, I guess that sounds mean, but it happens more than I'd like to admit. Zeb will buy something that I would not buy, buy because it's complicated. Awesome. And uh, then I wind up actually being the one that works on it. Okay, we've got half the transfer on. I oh, did. I would have done that all the way up at the top. That line is weird. Um, so it, it lined up with your handle that you'd cut out. Oh. That's why, the way I did that. It's okay. Distress it. It'll be fine. Okay. Because I don't have the top pieces to like. We'll give it, we'll, oh, what we could do, there are some extra pieces. Yeah, we can do some more. I didn't um, know that what you had going on. I just lined it up with where you I, cut the handle. I out. sometimes expect you to read my mind, and sometimes you do. <laughs> so I, I, I roll with it. No, there's. We have some words that we can use, and we have some edges that we cut off. After 22 years of marriage, not a mind reader. But you're pretty good. Sometimes he's like, "You'll have to lower your expectations," and I'm like, "No." You've already done too good. Can't can't do that now. I'm getting older. All right. I'm going to walk are, away from this slipping. giraffe for a minute and see if I can find something to put on the top of that to just kind of connect it so it doesn't look disjointed. Where are the pieces that I cut off? Oh. What? You touched something and we're no longer live. I did not touch anything. Yep. You bumped something. Hold oh, shoot. On. We're coming back. Hang on. Let me see if we can get us back Ivy, here. let them know we're coming back. All right. I won't go over there again. Yeah, please don't. Sorry. Okay, we're good. Sorry about that, guys. I'm just trying to find the parts that I cut off. Like, oh, they're over in the window. Are they so. right here? Nope. Or what about there? We could just put words up there. No, I got it right here. I put them in the window. Sorry, guys. That's why Zeb doesn't allow me to touch the camera. It was an accident. They could still hear us. Okay, so there's this part here. Like, I'm thinking you could take this part and this part and just do floral kind of across the top. Yeah, we'll figure something okay, out. Okay, I'm going to leave this here. So I, just so you know, I want this piece here. 
Oh, the one in the middle? Yeah. And then there's another portion. So like center this and you can- It's good if I don't have to guess. It's even better if I don't have to guess or I'll remember. I'll be specific. That's what I want. There's two parts so it can go across the entire way. What, one of the things too, like communication, people are like, how do you guys work so well together? Well, communication. And occasionally one or the other if of you, us- If you leave me, if you leave it up for interpretation, you have to be willing to accept my interpretation because if you didn't give me specific instructions i'm gonna do it how i wanted to and that valid <laughs> and i have to be willing to accept that and i also have to be willing that occasionally you're very specific with me and i need to not be offended like if you get offended easily when people tell you what they want then working with your spouse is not a great option <laughs> well we did have with the door build i she had said she wanted something and I was like, no, I'm not going to do it like that. That's going to be a lot of extra work. And I failed to communicate that. that to her. And she's like, how come you're not doing it like this? And I'm like, oh, yeah, we didn't have that talk and it's already done. <laughs> and I'm, I told you we've been dealing with some family stuff. So I'm a little extra sensitive about things that I ordinarily would not be like. And it's not our immediate family. Nobody's dying. Nobody has cancer. I'm like disclosure of that. It's like something else. But it's been a little bit stressful. And when I say a little bit, I mean a lot of it. So Zeb and I are constantly like having to keep ourselves in check. All right, I'm going to dark wax this for you. And I'm going to grab a rag to wipe it back. And the door is beautiful. And if you want to see the video, it's on Jamie and Zeb. It's turned out mostly how I wanted. It's better than it was before. And I've had to come to accept that... Nothing in my home is going to be exactly how I want it. And a lot of that's because I'm not doing the work. And when somebody else is doing the work, sometimes you just did, have to let did, them have. What did I tell you? What did you tell I me? I said, if you want it exactly like that, you need to build the door. <laughs> and I was like, well, this will do. Because <laughs> Jamie don't play that. I, we, we each have our skills in construction. If you look at the carpentry in this house that I did, I will tell you will be like, okay, yeah, take the tool, the power tools away from her. That's it's going to be our life's work to like repair all the molding. The best molding I did is the molding that like my dad helped with. Yeah, your dad is very fastidious and did it for a lot of years before he was ever a contractor. He in in the trades he was like a finished carpenter, and among many other things, but but uh and painter don't don't oh, just gosh. slap some paint on the wall when he's around no you better not have drips i have learned though like done is better than perfect people that are perfectionists very rarely are satisfied even if they tell you they're satisfied they're constantly picking apart their work and they're having a hard time getting things completed all the way and for like well i do want to have a house that's nice I also want to have a good relationship with my husband, and I also want to not spend so much time being a perfectionist that I'm not spending time taking care of my business, taking care of my kids, like looking good in my house, like having things be perfect doesn't supersede any of my relationships with the people in the house. That's kind of my perspective. All right, you are right. That transfer kind of ended weird up there at the top. <laughs> I mean, it's all right. We, we can show people how to fix it if they do. Like in my mind, I was going to start there and come down. But you're right. You're right in that the words were weird. But the thing is, we could have moved the words. We could have cut out all the words independently and moved them. So we're going to fix that top. We're going to show you how. So if you had to do this, if you were doing this, I would start at the top. And if the words didn't hit where you wanted to, cut each piece out independently and then you can format it how you want. Just because a transfer comes a certain way doesn't mean that that's the way it has to fit on your piece because that's why you're doing it yourself so you can customize it. So I'm wiping back this dark and it's going to stick down in any of the texture or cracks um, and the reason why we clear waxed it is so that way it didn't look dirty because that can happen. If you just went straight dark wax you might never be able to pull it back. The beauty of these transfers is a lot of times you can just cut out the elements you want. You don't necessarily have to use them in the full sheet. Mom, are you going to lunch with the gals? Are they picking you up here? Okay. Oh, okay. 
I don't know. In front of our house? I have no idea. I think it's one of the construction workers because we have that construction going on the road next to ours. My mom's going out to lunch with the Golden Girls of Lehigh. It's literally what they're called. They're the cutest. We all love them. They go to church with us. Redrick smiles at him when he's passing the sacrament. Talk, talk him into going shopping. I told you I'd take you to Smith's when Eliza has tumbling. You get anxious for shopping? Well, if you can wait, I'll take you to Smith's. So then. this is going to overlap, and if you distress it, you'll see where it overlaps. Just, it's fine. I'll just not distress right where it overlaps. Okay. I'll just go around the edge. It's okay. I've layered them before. I It'll actually still might just cut them into like tiny little elements and do yeah, the Yeah, you could do that across. too. You don't have to use it. Exactly. Uh, those are for Nicole. By my mom found, did you guys see those Santa pig shakers? They're for Odelia's, um, I guess not her mother-in-law, her her boyfriend's mom. We just call her the future mother-in-law because they're pretty serious. She spends more time over there these days than over Yeah, here. she loves them. <laughs> and we love Cooper. And he's not even there. All right. That's so a good sign. Let me show you the giraffe up close. I think it's a vast improvement. Oh, yeah, that's looking good. I'll get that. You can see that the dark is just down in kind of the cracks. Even the imperfections in the paint when you're using dark wax they become a positive because that gives places for the wax to settle. If you're, it's a perfect paint finish, then you don't have any place for that wax to settle. Did you put those dogs in our room? I did. I can hear and Cody's Cody can pathetic. hear Cody can hear grandma in the hall and he's like, I hear her. I hear She's my favorite. I need to go see her. Yeah. Do not let the dogs out, mom. Okay. Well, we'll see. She's going to go. The sun came out and thinks she's going to go hang out out Maybe. there. Maybe. Cody has a pathetic little yip when he doesn't get what he wants. He's cute and he knows it. Nancy says she can see someone buying that giraffe statue and turning it into a lamp for a boy's room. That would be cool. I think you could. You'd have to be. You don't necessarily have to drill up through the giraffe. You just put a pole. You could do a pole in between them. They're pretty close together. You could do a pole in the back is what I would do. Kind of offset it because I've seen a bunch of animal lamps and sometimes the poles are offset. And the paint finish that was on here before had a little bit of texture. So that's some of what's coming yeah. through. It's not all your paint. It's like finish. a plaster. Yeah. If there's ever a texture in the piece that you're working on before you start painting that you don't like, you need to sand that first because whatever the texture is that you start with, that texture will come through the paint that you're using. In fact, it'll even be accentuated. So keep that in mind. Robin says that she likes them without spots. Me too. I've eliminated several giraffe spots in my day. We've painted elephants pink. Like we do whatever we want over here. We're rogue. It's not like they're priceless antiques, so. All right, so you can see I'm kind of trying to eliminate that line up top, and it looks like I need to do a little bit better job. Hope it's not focusing, sorry guys. Still a line. Can we see? Oh, so you'll have to like, just take one that, it, it's okay if there's a line here, but just go down over that a little bit. You want to yeah. kind of layer over the top a little. And probably only we would note it. Like, just remember that there's things that you do that only you will notice. And if it looks good from six feet away, it's okay. Six foot art rule. Imperfections are the beauty of something being hand done. It says, hey, a human did this, not a machine. I'm glad we're mic'd up because the annoying of beeps. beeps of all those machines out there is enough to make me go crazy. They're, I think, I don't know if they're doing power. It looks like they're doing like some underground sewer doing. in the road. I have no idea. All right. So if you don't get wax everywhere, also don't stress because you're going to be wiping it across with a rag and that will help get that wax anywhere that it wasn't.
And we will come off camera and clean up the bottom of this, either sand it or paint the bottoms. A lot of times we just paint them. It's okay if the paint underneath isn't perfect, but you do want to make it a little cleaner. Well, there's mom's ride. It's our neighbor right across the street. As she's looking at her phone. I wonder if she's going to look up and notice that Sharon's there. Oh, there she is. My mom's only lived with us. My mom and my dad used to live with us before I died. It's only been, what, like three years. So she's still like making friends. She used to live, she lived in her last area for a really long time. Yeah, since you were a freshman in high school, that's been a minute. Yeah. Where do I keep setting my I'm trying down? not to also scratch myself with this, uh, these things that are poking up here. I could just dress it a lot faster if they weren't coming out of the ground. Marcella Pity says, I just watched your video on the house redo. It was absolutely awesome. Well, thank you. It was uh, awesome. That, the, the house is still a work in progress, but it's mostly done. It's very livable. We've been here three years now. I like it. It's just all the little stuff that, like, we have other projects, so it's not critical, so it never gets done. Somebody was like, how do you guys, with so many things to do, decide what to do? Well, I don't know. We just keep working. A lot of it has to do with, can I do this in a video? Will it be interesting? And can we finish it in one, one or two days so that it's not like an eight-part video? And if it's something that's going to be more long-term, what can we do intermittently so we can still do our job? Because people say, well, you just do what you got to do. Don't worry about videos. Well, we have to. It's, it's our job. Like, that's how we make money. You can't just not work. We're not independently wealthy. We got to... We still have to do our job, so, but it's all right. Luckily, our job coincides with our personal projects. Okay, what do you think? Did I get it? Zebulon? Yeah, it's ready to glue back on. Maybe heat gun those little squares if you got any wax. Um, I don't think I really got I don't. I didn't get a lot of wax in them. Like, there's, there, it's not built up or anything. You okay. can see, like, there's not wax there. Perfect. I did my best. I'm going to go back to questions now that I'm done with this. I've been trying to look at them. You've been doing a good job. I'm pretty proud of you. It's not usually your favorite. Here, I'll, you want to scooch over? What about the cottage? That is absolutely happening. That's part of the reason why we are trying to get our, while it's cold outside, it's a perfect time to finish indoor projects. So we're getting all of our thrift flips done and we are going to be committed to not having so many thrift flips and because we've got to get that cottage finished. Yeah, it's sat empty for almost a year now. And while it wasn't like Harrington was paying us a little bit, mostly to cover his utilities, um, it could be a pretty good source of revenue for us to help us do other projects we want to do. Oh, that's a good question. Pat asked if it's okay that wax separated. So I can only talk to the wax that I use. So DIY wax, occasionally like the dark or the white will separate because you're mixing clear wax in with like a color. All you have to do, um, what I have done in the past is just mix it up to reconstitute it. Um, I've even been known to, and this is just uh, take it for what it's worth. Um, I've even been known to heat it up a little bit um, and then mix it up, like scoop it out, heat it up, mix it up, pour it in. So that way it's more together. You can just use it the way that it is, or you can scoop it all out, put it in something that you can heat up and then pour it back in and then just let it come back together. All right. Are you going to distress this? I feel like that's quite a bit better. It no, does that is way good. On there a little bit. I'm going to have to because you went over the edge a little bit, but I, I'll just, do we have sandpaper? I could just do the top. I think you need, a, there's a couple peek. Oh, I need to definitely do more on the base. On I'm going to do that okay. off camera, but like where the, where the transfer wraps around and goes down the leg, I'm going to sand that transfer off. See right here? Okay. You went, you got a little aggressive with it. So well, I'm just gonna... it was, I was trying to break it off and it just stuck. So I was like, oh, we're going to go with it. Yeah. All so right. Gonna... Tight bond two wood glue. We're going to get this other giraffe back on here. I'm going to sand where it would normally wear, definitely along the edges. And this will kind of meld it a little better. And just lightly go over the top. So it looks like it's like connected to the piece, I feel like. Let's 
sandpaper is this? 150. Oh, good thing I'm going soft. I like 220. Oh, yes. You probably actually should go get some. That's all right. I'm doing fine. Okay. I'm just not pushing. This has been used a little bit, and I'm not pushing hard. I'm just going along the ends. Yeah, that looks good. What do you think now that I just lightly distressed it? I don't want to like take away from it. Do you see how that now connects it? I think it's really good. So off camera, I'm going to um, put the, a towel down so I don't get any paint. I don't want anywhere. I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to paint all these edges really good. And then I will come back to stress along the edges to bring back some of that original dark finish. And then I will, we're going to seal over the top. So I can go ahead and seal the top right now. Let me just finish distressing. I'm trying to line up these nails so that they go right back in the same holes and I don't have to like do another new nail, but they look like they're bent a little bit. So it's been difficult. <laughs> and we got glue running. Nothing a damp cloth can't fix. Remember when I told you that I melted the lid to the sealer? My Sweet Pickens top coat is now in a canning jar <laughs> because the lid was not salvageable. I'm going to just use a little brush because I'm just doing the top. I'm not going to seal the whole thing. I'm just putting this over the part where the transfer is to seal the transfer because the rest will be sealed by the paint that I used. Got it. All right. If this was just home decor, it probably wouldn't be as critical, obviously, to seal over the top of it. But because this is going to be like stepped on and wiped up, I'm probably going to do two coats of sealer over the top of the transfer. So that way the end user can use it as intended. And I will let the sealer just air dry and I will come back in a couple hours to do that. If you ever have to meet up somebody for a transaction where you're selling something, meet them at the police station. Most police stations are well lit and they have a place where you can park to handle transactions that they have cameras if you have to go by yourself. Robin, this stool has sold, and um, the other one we did that's going to be on Thursday's video has sold as well. I actually don't think we have any stools, small ones, in the shop available. They sell we, usually before we get them to the shop. We had one for a while that had sheep on it that we did a video, but then we said we were keeping, then I wound up selling, so it took a while for people to realize it was actually for sale, but it sold. How much is a stool? This stool sold for $49.95. Keep that in mind when you're doing things, especially if you're putting a transfer or you're going to repair something like you need to make sure you're taking your artistry into play, because if you don't charge enough, then you won't be able to buy more products to have more fun and do more things with. And I'm definitely glad since Deb completely took that all the way apart <laughs> that we, uh, that we sold it for $49.95. That's pretty much our the standard. Stool? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's about where we're at with most of our stools. Some of them, um, we charge even a little more if they're bigger. So I got some dark wax in here to kind of cover up where the glue spot was. And then I it was a little messy, so I'm just coming in here with some clear wax, and that's evening it back out so it doesn't look like I just glued dark wax on there in between these giraffe legs. Stay tuned to the website today. We're going to finish up filming all of our thrift flips. And then I'm going to go through and anything that hasn't sold that we painted is going to be the photos will be updated today, even though the video is not going up tomorrow. So if you come back in a few hours and check the website, you might be able to pick up something before the video goes live. Are we going to um, the bins this afternoon? No, the video tomorrow. But are, are we, we going, going to the bins? Yeah. We cool. just need to finish this and I'll take pictures and on the way of the bins, I'll update the photos on the website. All right, guys. I 
even just painted, like if I hadn't carved the ears a little bit, this one ended up better. These ears were really big and I didn't want to like completely mess with the shape of the head and things. Um, I feel like it's still got like a fun style, but it's not so abstract that it can't be used in like daily decor. Okay, uh, Leslie says paint a palooza. No paint a palooza. We wound up painting everything we're painting for this week yesterday and it will be on Thursday's video. We had a lot of phone calls to make yesterday. And so we, we painted while we were on speakerphone. Yeah, so we will have, <laughs> We will have paint a palooza on the end of the video that goes up tomorrow that has us shopping at the bins and then all of our thrift flips. So make sure you guys are hitting that notifications button or just checking back on our videos. Some people will say, well, I'm, it's not showing up in my feed. I promise you, unless something major is happening, we're pretty consistent. So you can expect a video by the end of Monday, by the end of Thursday or Friday morning, kind of depending. And then always waste on Wednesday and our Saturday video. Um, and we try really hard to be consistent. So you can always just check back for those. What about selling big furniture? I just have them come to my house. Be so careful. Um, I personally, when the reason we got a booth was because we started to feel like it was unsafe. So use we were your selling best a judgment lot and a lot of people when you were have coming people to the house. coming to your home. I know that it can be difficult um, because it costs money to have it at another place. But for us, it ultimately just wound up. We wanted our kids to be safe. So we had people like we even now, if somebody buys something that's personal from us, we meet them at our store. We will, we don't sell from our home. So, uh, they said that it, that, that looks like a moose. It Rhonda does said, have kind of a moose head, huh? Um, and Sandy likes the Vulcan ears. Ben, Brenda asked a question about, bonding stickers on your thrift flips. Have you considered putting a sticker on the bottom? Um, we have, uh, but we don't use them. We just do a lot. So we probably should get like little tiny stickers made that we can just There's put enough of our, our uh, trash to treasure flips out there. <laughs> I feel like if people want like authenticity one, for their items, they can just save the link to the video. I, and that's provenance that we did it. This was so broken. I'm surprised it even made it through the thrift store. Like a lot of times they'll get something if it's as broken as this was, they'll just toss it. They don't, it doesn't even make it to the floor. Um, Joanne had a good bit of advice, have a prominently displayed security camera, because when people know that they're being watched, they're more likely to behave. They, they, so, they mind their manners better. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, I, I think we're good there. If you have any questions, um, be sure to email info at jamierayvintage.com. If Caitlin doesn't know the answer, she texts us directly. And we can make sure that you are getting responded to. If you need paint products or want to buy any of our thrift flips, um, just go to Jamie Ray Vintage. We have a collection for our thrift flips and finds. It's all on there. And of course, we have all the DIY products you could need. And if you like this video, please share it with your friends. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more. DIY. We'll see you guys on the next episode.